Some of this sounds quite like hypnosis. Is it not? Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're looking at films that capture either the factual or emotional realism of real life cults. Setting aside the supernatural element of most movies about religious fanatics, these films delve into the real human horror of cult life. I, I should go back. Go back where? The Invitation. I'm free. All that useless pain, it's gone. In 2015's underappreciated horror, The Invitation, Will and his girlfriend are invited to dinner at his ex-wife Eden's home. Will and Eden have both been struggling with grief over their son who died accidentally. Will struggles day to day, but Eden has ostensibly overcome her grief thanks to the help of a cult she's found in Mexico. Real-life cults use bereavement and grief as a weapon. Death, divorce, and other similar events in a person's life leave them at their most vulnerable. Don't tell me that this is normal. The invitation. It helps people. The specific motivations of the film's murder cult are never truly discussed. Still, their weaponization of grief and post-morning love bombing are textbook examples of cult behavior. To a better world. To peace. Cheers. Sound of my voice. Like anything new, it will be impossible for your mind to digest. Maybe close your eyes. Writer and actress Britt Marling has a history of using sci-fi and horror as lenses through which to examine the human condition. In 2011, she starred as Maggie, the supposed time traveler from the future. She's formed a group to prepare them for horrors to come. Who took your power away from you? Who made you feel so powerless you'd become obsessed with control? While the film leans into the sci-fi elements, Maggie may actually be from the future, it strikes a realistic note. We follow potential members at every stage, from neophyte to believer. The aesthetic of the cult, from the wardrobe to the rituals, is spot on. As with real cults, every piece of clothing, every mantra, every ritual is designed for coercive persuasion. The individual is broken down, their thought process is overwritten, until their skepticism is converted into belief. The ones who will not only survive, but will thrive, are the ones who realize that there's nothing to be afraid of. Lords of Chaos. Things are miserable. People are ruled by dictatorship. Just like us here in Norway. Evolving out of heavy metal, black metal music can be traced to Norway in the late 1980s. Early bands utilized satanic lyrics and imagery for shock value. By the early 1990s, some bands, led by Mayhem, took it more literally. Lords of Chaos is a biopic about Mayhem, starring Rory Culkin as their lead guitarist, Euronymous. By incorporating pagan blood fueled rituals into their act, the band and its fans morphed into a cult of personality. I hate that. All those death metal kids with their stupid morbid angel t-shirts are making a trend out of something that was meant to instill fear. In the film, Euronymous spurs his bandmates and fans to the mass arson of churches in Norway. In real life, he wasn't officially connected. Still, other black metal musicians and fans were. Lords of Chaos brings that period of fire and blood to life. You'll have to find another idiot to steal everything from. I haven't stolen anything from you. The Endless. You have a horrible memory. That place is not what you think it is. I know. Doomsday cults often come to tragic, deadly endings. Heaven's Gate, a UFO-based cult, ended that way in 1997. The aftermath of such an event leaves generations of trauma in its wake. The Endless tells the story of two adult brothers exploring their past. They were raised in a Heaven's Gate-style cult and managed to escape. The film imagines a world where a cult like Heaven's Gate might actually be right. Can you have power over yourself if you give up any amount of authority to something else? It makes the list due to its emotional content. The Endless is a deep dive into what it feels like to be brainwashed. The process of falling into and out of a cult is one that leaves a victim questioning their reality. The eerie, uncomfortable vibe is meant to reflect that descent into uncertainty. We never anticipate the ways we're going to isolate ourselves from the ones we care about. Red State. God doesn't love you. Let's fear him. Kevin Smith may be known for stoner comedies, but the writer-director has never shied away from examining his own faith. Smith, raised Catholic, 
felt a deep disdain for the actions of the Westboro Baptist Church. He spent years putting together Red State, a piercing look at the extremist organization. Smith's version imagines a similar church that follows through on its homophobic rhetoric. Well, so I went for this flick that I feel is me trying my best to do Quentin Tarantino by way of the Coen brothers. Their hateful beliefs extend to ritualistic murders. The leader of this church employs classic cult tools to brainwash his congregants. He uses force and coercion to break their will and fear of another to target their rage. People just do the strangest things when they believe they're entitled. But they do even stranger things when they just plain believe. Faults. They're worried about you, Claire. Don't call me that. She was weak and stupid. Given the nature of cults, it makes sense that most cult-related movies tend to be horrors. Riley Stern's independent film Faults takes a different approach. The dark comedy focuses on the difficulties that surround deprogramming a cult member. The film follows Ansel, a down-on-his-luck cult specialist hired to deprogram a cultist Claire. I've moved up a level, Ansel. Claire is a part of me, I accept that, but I'm not her. Claire's parents are desperate for help and will turn to anyone, even a man whose failed attempt at deprogramming once led to a woman's death. It's a heavy topic, but Stearns handles the subject fairly well. The deprogramming becomes a battle of wills and gives off a similar vibe to an exorcism. One day I will be a mountain Terry, but for now I am a fault. Apostle. No tax gatherers, Bill Shalem. Threaten our church door. We, I tell thee, we. We are free men. When one thinks of British movie about cults, it's natural to think of the original 1973 Wicker Man. 2018's Apostle could give Wicker Man a run for its money. Apostle takes place in 1905 on a tiny island off the coast of Wales. Thomas, a former missionary, infiltrates a diabolical cult that has recruited his sister. Beware false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. The raid mastermind, Gareth Evans, ventured outside of his comfort zone with this terrifying and gruesome tale of an ex-missionary who attempts to extract his sister from a bloodthirsty cult on a barren island outside of Wales in 1905. They told me you were dead. <laughs> It's not uncommon for some cults to set up camp out in the wilderness, away from prying eyes and local authorities. The Sacrament Children, we have some special visitors to the parish today. Let's show them our hospitality and represent ourselves in the way the Lord has taught us. The Sacrament is a 2013 horror movie loosely based on the Jonestown Massacre. The People's Temple began in the 1950s as a social revolutionary church. It evolved into a large and powerful cult. Leader Jim Jones moved his community of over 900 followers to a commune in Guyana. In 1978, Jonestown was visited by US Congressman Leo Ryan at the request of some of their families. The trip ended with disaster. Jones's men attacked the congressman's delegation while the community drank poisoned fruit punch. Just relax, you're in paradise. The sacrament follows a news crew as they visit a similar cult in Central America. While fictional, the film is a slow burn psychological thriller that attempts to capture the terror of being in a death cult. I gave them all I could and then I gave them a way out. The Master. Five years after There Will Be Blood netted a pair of Oscars, director Paul Thomas Anderson followed up with The Master. Telling the story of a Navy vet with PTSD, looking to heal and find purpose, The Master looks at the founding of a cult called The Cause. Dude, tell me why you're not with her if you love her so much. I told her I'd come back and I never went back and now I just, I gotta get back to her. Why don't you go back? I don't know. Why don't you go back? I don't know! The movie is a slow, methodical drama, eschewing the violence and terror of most films about cults. Instead, Anderson opts to focus on the human connections between cult members. No, I can leave anytime I want, but I choose not to, I choose to stay here. The search for meaning, love and escape from pain is how many cults reel in victims. Through isolation, cults like The Cause manipulate people at their lowest and most desperate. For if you figure a way to live, without serving a master, any master, 
then let the rest of us know, will you? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Martha Marcy May Marlene Shake him. Calm down. Years before becoming an Avenger, Elizabeth Olsen made her film debut in the psychological drama Martha Marcy May Marlene. She plays Martha, a 22-year-old woman who starts the film by escaping a cult deep in the Catskill Mountains. While doing research, writer and director Sean Durkin was enthralled by the process of entering a cult. I know you feel like something bad has happened, Marcy May. But you have to trust me that wasn't bad. That was truly good. He wrote a short film and followed it up with his feature debut about exiting the same cult. He retells that story in Martha Marcy May Marlene through flashbacks. He doesn't spare the details. As with real cults, the fictional commune uses brutality, isolation, and psychological torment to break Martha to their will. But we had a connection. We do. Show me. <laughs> do you have personal knowledge about cults? Or have you watched a ton of true crime documentaries on cults? Is there a realistic cult on film that we missed? Let us know in the comments. Are you involved in some kind of cult? Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.